What up, y'all? It's your boy Skookum. Welcome back to another episode of uh, Wildlife Control Operator. I got this guy behind me because this episode is a lot of coon. Tis the season, though. So I hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. Welcome back uh, to another episode. I just wanted to say thank you guys. We just broke 300 subs, which is rad. Um, I started out doing this just to kind of document what I'm uh, doing out in the woods, having fun, trapping beavers, trapping things. And it's actually turned into like a career, not the YouTube side, but the trapping. So I'm just super blessed and grateful and God is good. So. Like I said in the intro, this video is mainly about raccoons. Um, I've had three different uh, nuisance residential coon jobs, and those have pulled 11, 11 total coons in the past month. So three cities over, I got a call on some nuisance coons that were underneath a vacation rental. When I arrived at the property, did an inspection, I found large amounts of poop outside a duct underneath the porch. I set two cages outside, set two underneath in a crawl space, which was new for me, to set traps for raccoons like rats under a house. It produced, it was pretty cool. I caught six coons on that job alone over the span of about three weeks. So coons here uh, are pretty educated to cages, which is wild. Um, having to trap an educated coon is hard. So we use different methods. A lot of times they just set a dog proof. I set the two, the four traps the first day, two outside, two underneath. The One of the outside traps produced the biggest coon I've ever caught. The thing was an absolute hog. It was a beast. Um, and his fur was perfect. Uh, so I did harvest his fur. And then it also produced a grinner on the other side, which was actually a pretty big possum. And by the way, grinner means possum. Um, for those of you who might be confused like in my last video and then it took a couple days of monitoring my trail camera It sends pictures right to my phone. Um, I watched some coons come in Investigate the traps and dip out but patience pays off I did catch two juvenile coons underneath the home in those traps But one actually got out while trying to get him from the crawl space Yo, what happened? He's trying to get out did he get out? Oh my god, he got out. Gosh dang it. Well, I no longer have that trap. It's at the dump where it belongs. So a few days later, I caught two more. And then there was one straggler, and this one was the smart coon of the bunch. It was really hard to catch. But I ended, I did end up connecting with him with a dog proof. But when I went to go and extract him, I didn't have my camera on me. I got another job towards the end of that job for nuisance raccoons from a guy from our church and he had raccoons under his home um, leaving massive piles of feces and kind of just disrupting his his life so i went out there helped him out i did only manage to catch two coons there get one here that's a pretty good size one <sighs> i did catch a lot of neighborhood cats on camera, not in my cages. If you've been following Skookum, my adventures, this next job that I'm about to explain, you've actually seen this property. I titled the video Quintuple Coon Catch. But if you haven't seen it, check it out. I caught five raccoons in one night on a piece of property that's a tenth of an acre. In the inspection, I thought it was just rats until I looked further. Her siding was tore up and chewed on. I've been seeing a lot of the ventilation ducts in the foundation of homes being you know, pushed in by contractors putting in piping or the cable and internet guys pushing it in to put in wires and they're not covering it up. 
And this is a prime entry for rats and raccoons and possums, all the things you don't want in your house. At this location, last time I set six traps, I produced five in one night. This time it wasn't so easy, and I think I actually educated these raccoons um, the last time I was there. They would not go anywhere near the cage, but they actually found out how to lift up the dog proof, flip it upside down, and dump out the bait. I, I have it on camera of one just relaxing, eating the marshmallow that he got out of my dog proof. I did manage to catch two giant rats. One was in a dog proof, which was crazy. It's a first for me. Another first was I caught one in a have a heart cage trap. These are pretty big rats to not be able to get through the holes of the have a heart. But I produced three raccoons there. It took me about a week to get the three. So it, it, was, it was a pretty good job. Some people out there think that raccoons are cute and cuddly and shouldn't be harmed. Raccoons are not cute, okay. That's a lie. Raccoons are cute. Some of you think that they don't need to be taken out of the neighborhoods, and here's a few reasons why um, that couldn't be any further from the truth. Okay, one, when they come under your home, they love to rip the insulation down. They nest in it, they lay in it, they bed in it, they pee in it, they poop in it. So they're causing damage to your property, your home. Thousands of dollars of damage I've seen done. If you have pets, they're at risk of fighting these raccoons. Raccoons carry a numerous amount of diseases. I feel like I'm talking so much about raccoons. One of them being leptospirosis, and this is transmitted through urine. You may not be at the most risk because I don't know too many people who are hanging out in their crawl space, and if you are, you're stop it, you're a weirdo. This is a bacterial disease, and it can be treated. Um, most of it can be treated, but it's gonna, it's really gonna put a monkey wrench in your program. But the mo by far the most hazardous to your health is the raccoon roundworm. This is transmitted through the feces of a raccoon. It's a rare case that it's transmitted to humans, but it can be. So if you have a vast amount of feces under your home, I can guarantee you there's raccoon roundworms in there. So I wear a respirator, I wear eye protection, I wear gloves, knee pads underneath a home where there's raccoon feces uh, because the roundworm can kill you. It, it has killed humans. It's, it's a health risk. You don't, you do not want these guys in your home. I had one person inquire about my services and ask, well, where do they get transported to? Part of me wants to lie to seal the deal and say, yeah, I'm gonna take them to a raccoon refuge where they're kicking back with their raccoon buddies, cheers and Coronas, but that's not the way it is. In the state of Oregon, it is illegal to relocate any type of animal besides snakes, a silver squirrel, or a fisher, which you're not even supposed to be trapping anyway, badgers and beavers in some cases. But as for everything else, you, it is against the law to relocate so your option is I can come trap the raccoon in your home and release it in your front yard or you just don't hire me and this person said well I'll just deal with it until they leave so there's some people out there that just let the raccoons live under their house but the bottom line is it's a risk to your health your pets and your property okay aside from all the raccoon jobs I did set some traps for uh, some beavers and this was recreational these were not nuisance beavers um, I have a honey hole. I set one set, that means there's one trap out, for three nights. And on the first night, I made contact, caught a pretty big beaver. Second night, uh, I made contact, but he pulled out. And the third night, I made contact and caught a beaver. So in three nights with one set, I caught two beavers. And it was pretty rad. I love trapping. I love it. I love um, harvesting fur. Um, harvesting these animals and, and contributing to wildlife management. These animals need to be managed or um, they will just outgrow and then you see disease and the lack of food. So trapping is good. And the final update here in uh, my world is I purchased 5,000 domestic beetles. If you don't know what domestic beetles are, they are flesh-eating beetles. Uh, the ones from the movie The Mummy, and they crawl in your skin, and I'm just kidding. They do eat flesh, but they eat the flesh of dead animals. I purchased these guys to help me with my taxidermy endeavors. I love the way a skull looks when it's pearly white. If you guys have seen any of my previous videos of the skull, you've seen me covered in brains, and that gets kind of old, especially when the animal stinks and it's rotten and someone gives me a skull to do and it makes me want to puke. The last thing I want to do is pressure wash that into my face. So I bought these beetles and they've been putting in work. 
I mean, this guy is tiny, a tiny little skull. So it's pretty neat that all of his teeth are there, all the stuff in his nose is there, and that's because my, my buddies, the Beatles, they're putting in work. I converted a freezer into a hot box, ventilation going in and out, and a heat lamp, and it's all self-regulating. I've got Wi-Fi meters where I can, I can check on my Beatles from here. And it's currently 79.2 degrees Fahrenheit in there. But I'm going to slowly adapt them to having a dim light in there, and I will put a GoPro and get you guys a time lapse of them cleaning some skulls because I think that would be awesome. That's all I've got for updates. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed and as always, like, subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for all the support. I appreciate it. Peace and love guys. Until next time.